What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about 5 tips to help you improve your videos. All of these tips are things that you can implement into your own videos or short films pretty much straight away and it will take them to the next level. Also finally, got some sort of a little lighting setup going on in here at the minute. It's not the greatest, but it's a little better than what it was and we've got a few extra pieces that we need to just improve it a little bit. I am sitting on the floor though, so kind of the best I can do at the minute. Okay, tip number one, and this is something that both me and Christina agree may be probably the most important thing when it comes to videos, and that is a little bit of planning. Kind of have an idea, or at least a general idea of some sort, what the video or little film is, especially if it's a film, but if it's just a normal video or vlog, have an idea of what the story is gonna be. Whether you're going on a road trip, whether you're going to play tennis, whatever the hell, I don't know why I said tennis, but whatever the hell it is, have some sort of an idea what the story is, where it's gonna start and roughly where it's gonna end. This will then allow you to have some sort of idea of what shots you might want to get throughout the day or however long it is that you're going to be recording this video. Especially important when it comes to short films because you want to know the story and then ideally plan out almost every shot. Because this way you can almost see the story on paper. You have, whether you write out a script or not, I don't know, but you can kind of have a shot list wrote out and you can just imagine how it's going to look in your head before you even go out. And at least that way you know, if I get all these shots and they turn out how I would like, this is going to be pretty good. It just does make such a difference when you're making videos. We've done a lot of vlogs and we've made a few little short films and cinematic sequences and stuff and the difference from when we even have some sort of an idea of what the video is going to be two days when we just go out and wing it and record stuff is night and day. The videos are always 10 times better when we plan them and then the more we plan them the better they get. Um, there's always room for adding in some shots if you're there and you see something you like but have some sort of an idea about the story of the video or film that you're gonna do and then plan your shots and it just will be better. Make a little list of shots that you think will look cool that you've maybe seen somebody else do in a video or whatever it may be. Have an idea of the story, plan some shots. It really does help your videos. Okay, tip number two. This does actually relate quite a bit to tip number one, but this focuses more on the type of shots you're gonna get. So once you create your shot list of things that you want to generally show in the video, then you want to mix up those shots a little bit. So what I mean by that is use different focal lengths, wide shots, close up shots, texture type shots. And by mixing your shots up like this with different focal lengths and texture shots and detailed shots and stuff like that, it just makes the video more entertaining. Especially, again, this is especially important if you're making short films because if every shot's just wide, like I said, it will get boring. So you want to mix it up, add in different shots, different focal lengths, and just show off little details. You don't always have to show a full scene. Somebody's writing something like we did in our last little cinematic video where Christina was writing down on the page. You don't have to show that from a distance because we've already seen it from a distance. We can get the idea of what's happening, but those little close-up details where it actually shows what she's writing on the page just adds to it and it just gives it a more cinematic, kind of dramatic feel to it. Another example of this is in the video that we made, the little commercial video we made for our camera bag. We mixed up the shots a lot in this one and we knew we wanted to do that because it works especially well in little commercials like that because you want to show the individual details of the bag and you also want to tell a little bit of a story. We were going for a stroll in the forest so you need to get the wide shots to actually show we're in the forest. They can't all be close up of grass or you don't really even know where you are or if every shot is a close up of the bag then it kind of defeats the purpose of being in the forest. You might as well do it in a little studio. So it just works. It improves everything by mixing up those shots. Wide shots, detailed shots. Include as many of them as you can and vary things up. Okay, moving on to tip number three. Tip number three also one of the most important things in general when it comes to making videos. It's also probably one of the most difficult at times, but if you can at least understand the basics, 
you can try to do your best in the scenario that you're in. Like I said at the start, I've got a, a little bit of a miniature, pretty amateur lighting setup going on at the minute. But the difference in this and the other videos that I recorded with just a window light is quite a bit. It's quite a bit better, I think. It's more dramatic. We've got the lighting coming in at one side and it just kind of draws attention a bit more to me. Whereas when I'm using the window light, yes, it lights up me and it's pretty good, but it also lights up the whole background. So it doesn't create as much depth. This way, I've got a little light. Oh, got a little light up here. Also got another little light, little lamp back there, and it just, it gives some sort of a bit of an ambiance to it. But this is just an example in a kind of a studio-y setup kind of way. If you're out in a forest or wherever it may be, getting the best light can simply be a case of doing a 180 and turning around. It's something that you might not notice at the time, but if you're filming and the lighting looks like it's a little bit brighter in the background, simply have your subject or whatever it is you're filming turn around the other way or walk around and get a different angle and you'll instantly see in your camera that the subject's just lit a bit better. And it can make a huge difference, especially when it comes to the post-processing when you're trying to color grade and stuff, the lighting at the time makes a huge difference. Obviously, when we're out doing videos, we're not always gonna have a, a lighting setup and everything with us, especially if you're out in a forest or you're doing a vlog or something. Don't worry about having lights and everything with you. Just use the natural light. Try to avoid shooting midday if you can, because you get that real harsh light and it creates really terrible looking shadows in your face but if you have no other choice then maybe try and use a diffuser or try and find some shade and shoot in it instead of shooting directly out in that harsh light but by at least understanding lighting and where possible using extra lighting if that's an option you will give your videos a much more professional look all right moving on to tip number four and that is music The music you choose for the video or short film that you're making is so important. It does take a long time. It takes us hours to find music sometimes for the videos, especially for that last little cinematic video and the commercial video that we made. We spent quite a few hours browsing through songs just to find the one that we thought worked best and created the vibe that we want to create in that video. It's just, it's so important. The whole mood that you portray in a video really does come down in a huge way to the music that you choose. So just for example, if you're making a vlog and it's raining and you want to kind of portray a moody day kind of vibe, you don't want to be using something really upbeat underneath those slow shots of the rain because it'll just feel weird and the mood won't be the same, it won't match up. You want to find a song that matches whatever it is you're showing in your clips. Unless you're trying to do something completely different then do whatever it is you want. But normally you want to match the music to whatever the mood is that you're trying to portray and it may take a while to find the perfect song but if it makes the video better then why not spend a few extra hours browsing through the songs to find the right one. Don't just flick through and hear a song you like and pick it and go, okay, I'm gonna make my video for it because you can make it 10 times better if you understand the story of the video, the moods in certain areas of it and match the song to that. Or if you wanna pick the song first, which we do in some cases, then find a song you like. If you know the story of the video you wanna make, find the song and then plan the video out around the song. But just know that the song is really important when it comes to making your video more professional and just generally better. We actually use Epidemic Sounds. This is not sponsored in any way by them, but they do have a great choice of music and they also have categories so you can find songs for that are ideal for short commercials. You can find real cinematic songs, you can find vloggy songs, so it just works really well. Don't know if vloggy songs is an actual thing, but that's what I'm calling them. And uh, finally, on to tip number five, which does relate quite a bit to the last one, which is music. And this is actually the sounds that you add along with the music. This is another one of those things that can really take your videos to the next level. Adding in those little sound effects under certain clips just really make the viewer feel like they're there and they really know what's going on. This is another one of those things that can take a little bit of time, but when you get it right, it makes such a difference. We used it quite a bit in both of our more recent cinematic videos and um, pressure that we made, and also the little commercial video. We used um, like wind noises in the forest and we used quite a few sound effects in the camera bag commercial with the zip and with Christina walking on the gravel and the sound that that makes and a few of them we had to kind of manipulate the sounds to make them suit what it was because we didn't actually have the exact sound we wanted. For example when she sat the bag down and stuff I actually found different sound effects and had to adjust them a little bit to make it look like it was actually made during the video. 
So yeah, it can take a little bit of time, but it makes such a difference. So you don't have to use it all the time. And if you're doing like a vlog and stuff, you're not gonna use it throughout the whole vlog, but maybe in the cinematic sequences, throw in a few sound effects just to create a bit of ambiance at the very least. If you're making something like a short film, then you're probably gonna to wanna to add a lot more in because a lot of the time when you're recording, especially in slow-mo and stuff, the sounds that your camera picks up can't really be used. So you might have to search and manipulate other sounds to make them suit. But when it's all together with the music and the shots all tied together, just throwing in those little sound effects underneath really does take your video to the next level. Like I've said, for most of these tips, but they all do, they all help a lot. And when you add them all together, it really does improve your videos. Some of you may already know all of this and some of you may use some of the tips that I mentioned, but make a little list of them if you don't. And next time you go to make a video or a short film, just look back at it and see if you've covered all those points. And if you have, you'll probably be on your way to making a pretty decent video. Sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's actually almost impossible to make sure that everything's perfect for a certain shot, but you just have to make do with what you got at the time and try and make it look as best you can. We're still learning a lot about all those areas, especially when it comes to lighting. Um, it's quite difficult and we're trying to figure out what works best and what lights we should use in certain scenarios and stuff. So it's all a work in progress and every video you make, you will learn something more than likely that you didn't know the video before. And after you make 10 videos, you're gonna learn even more. So just keep making videos, watching tutorials and stuff and your videos just simply will get better. But hopefully those tips helped a little bit. If they did, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. The video? The video, a big thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. And hit that subscribe button below if you want to see more. We're actually in the process at the minute of trying to come up with another little short film because we really enjoyed making the last one. So stay tuned for that as well. We have no idea at the minute what it's going to be about. We may also have a few other commercial videos in there that we make, which are fun too. So stay tuned for those. And I think that's it for this one. So as we always say, guys, take it easy. Don't be a stranger. I am thirsty. Check. The grills in my mouth double as a freeze, but the grills in my mouth double as a freeze, but the grills in my mouth.